lesson we're going to introduce the concept of market failure. We'll outline different ways that markets may fail to produce the optimal quantity of different goods. And we'll look at one particular type of market failure in some detail. That is negative externalities of production using a market for natural gas as our example. So let's start with the definition here. What is market failure? Up to this point in your economics class, you've probably been examining the markets for different goods and services, and you've learned that the free market tends to produce the most optimal or efficient level of output achievable. In fact, in our previous unit, we learned that anytime governments try to intervene in the production or consumption of a good by setting price ceilings or price floors, taxing or subsidizing the good, it leads to a loss of welfare and the market becomes less efficient. Well, that brings us to the situation in which the free market fails. A market failure exists when the production or consumption of a good by the free market takes place at a level that is not socially optimal. Another way of saying this is either too much or too little of the good will be produced by the free market. Market failures, believe it or not, happen quite often. In the real world, not every market for goods and services achieves perfect efficiency all the time, like you may have been led to believe in an earlier unit when you studied supply, demand, and market equilibrium. Markets fail all the time. Some of the different ways that markets fail are going to be introduced at this time. There are situations in which the production of a good creates spillover benefits or costs on a third party. These situations are called production externalities. When production externalities exist, the level of production achieved by the free market will either be too much in the case of negative externalities or too little in the case of positive externalities. Some goods create what we call consumption externalities. These exist when the consumption of a good creates external or spillover benefits for a third party. In a future lesson, we'll introduce and give some examples of consumption externalities and talk about how, in some cases, when a good is consumed, a third party not involved in the consumption of that good will either be helped or possibly even hurt. In such situations, the amount of the good produced and consumed by the free market will be not equal to the socially optimal quantity. The third type of market failure that we'll examine in our studies of market failure are what we call public goods. Public goods are goods that are non-rivalrous and non-excludable. These are terms that we will learn the specific definitions of in a future lesson and therefore will not be provided by the free market. Some examples of public goods might be roads, bridges, lighthouses, national defense. If you think about all of these goods, one thing they all have in common is that without government providing these things, private firms, business people would have very little incentive to do so. Therefore, the free market, in other words, without government intervention, we would not have many roads, bridges, lighthouses, or national defense. Therefore, this is considered a market failure. We'll talk more about these examples in future lessons. The next type of market failure we'll examine in some detail is what we call common access resources. These are resources that nobody owns, but anybody can exploit. Therefore, too much exploitation occurs. Common access resources have a specific definition as well. These are resources that are non-excludable, but rivalrous. Unlike public goods, which are non-excludable and non-rivalrous, the consumption of common access resources creates rivalry. In other words, other people are unable to consume them once somebody has done so. Therefore, we end up with a situation in which goods such as ocean fish, clean air, fresh water, the atmosphere, these are resources that tend to be over-exploited by the free market. And without some government intervention, we would end up having too much of these goods consumed, or in the case of natural resources, too many of these resources exploited. A couple more examples of market failure here that we're going to study in our examination of this economic problem. Information asymmetry. This is when the buyer and seller of a good have different levels of information about the good. 
In other words, if the seller of a good knows something about the good that the buyer does not know, then the price and the quantity of that good that will ultimately be consumed and produced will not be efficient. A classic example of this is used car salesmen who know something about the real quality or lack of quality of a product and does not reveal it to the buyer. In such a situation, buyers are tempted to pay more for a good in the case of a used car, for example, than they probably should and consume more of that good as well. Another type of market failure that we'll study in macroeconomics, in fact, is income inequality. And income inequality seems a little different than all these others because it seems to be something that takes place on a national level. This is a situation in which income is unequally distributed in society because of the under provision of education and opportunities for economic advancement between different social levels in society. This is obviously a very controversial one at the core of many of our political, social, and economic discussions in the world today, but ultimately income inequality could be said to be the result of a market failure in which resources are inefficiently allocated towards the provision of certain services such as education, uh, networking opportunities for people at different social and economic levels in society, and so on. The last type of market failure that we'll study a little bit in this unit, but more so in our next unit when we study the theory of firm behavior, is the abuse of monopoly power. When monopolies, when a single firm dominates a market, they tend to produce less than the socially optimal level of that good and charge a price that is higher than the price that would be charged in a more competitive market. We have just defined market failure as a situation in which the production or consumption of a good by the free market takes place at a level that is not socially optimal. In other words, either too much of a good or too little of a good will be produced by the free market. We've outlined several types of market failure that we're going to look at in more detail in future lessons in this course. These fall into the categories of production and consumption externalities, public goods, which are those goods that will not be provided at all by the free market, common access resources, which are those resources that anybody can exploit but nobody owns, so there's a lack of protection of these resources, asymmetric information, when buyers and sellers have different levels of information about a good, income inequality, and the abuse of monopoly power. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to go into some more detail about the first type of market failure introduced here, negative externalities of production. We'll use an example of a real market that is um, also quite controversial and in the news today, that for natural gas. And we'll outline how the production of natural gas may create negative externalities that are passed on to society and therefore the amount of natural gas produced by the free market will not be socially optimal. Here we go.